Rich, I want to get right to reaction on all of this from Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn. Uh, joining me uh, right now for his first interview since testing positive for COVID-19. First off, Senator, how are you feeling? I'm doing good. And I'm vaxxed and uh, max boosted and uh, I'm glad I am and feeling better. Thanks for asking. You look fantastic for what that's worth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about how this bill is looking, because uh, it looks like it's come down to just, just one, uh, one person again. Uh, we know that the, uh, the wooing of, uh, of, of, of Senator Cinema has been pretty intense. How do you see it checking out? Well, this deal was cut in the back room quite, uh, secretly by Chuck Schumer and Joe Manchin. Nobody knew anything about it. Certainly, Senator Cinema and none of her colleagues were consulted. So this was sprung on everybody last week after... Uh, about Thursday. And so uh, it's not surprising that she and others are trying to do their due diligence to find out exactly what's in it. And the more you look, uh, the more you realize that uh, this is false advertising. This is not a this is not an Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, according to Penn Wharton, it actually makes it a little bit worse in the near term. And uh, it certainly is a tax increase. Uh, Joe Manchin doesn't want to accept the fact that the Joint Committee on Taxation said that somebody making at least as little as $10,000 a year would see a tax increase under this bill, under the distribution yeah. tables that they are publicly available. And then we're asking, or at least Senator Manchin's asking, for middle-income taxpayers to subsidize the wealthy, uh, wealthiest people in our population who decide they want to buy an electric vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> $500 tax credit paid for by the middle class. And we've seen them off the subsidies for the Affordable Care Act. So, uh, again, the working class folks are asked to subsidize the top 1% when it comes to their health care. This is a, a, a bad idea whose time has not come. It's absolutely maddening. I want you to take a listen uh, to what Senator, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer actually said earlier today, pushing back uh, on Republican concerns over these tax increases. The Inflation Reduction Act will not, no matter how much our Republican colleagues argue to the contrary, will not increase taxes for any family making less than $400,000 a year. So, sir, you just went through the numbers, but uh, if you could speak to your colleague, what would you tell him right now? Well, I think that's a four Pinocchio performance. <laughs> um, it's, uh, what the fact checker typically give you when you're, what you're saying is obviously false. Uh, look. We all understand advocacy, but there are scorekeepers on uh, Capitol Hill, the Joint Committee on Taxation being one of them, which is the, uh, the one that, that uh, sets the standard. It's the gold standard. It's not me. It's not Senator Schumer. Uh, the facts will speak for themselves. And this idea that uh, this massive tax increase will just somehow be absorbed by corporate America uh, when they will pass those costs along to consumers and it will make inflation worse. Um, this is uh, this is uh, really a pig in a poke, and uh, I hope Senator Cinema and uh, some of our other Democratic colleagues simply will say no. Senator, in, in the last few days, I've seen recordings of President Bill Clinton talking about what a recession is, two back-to-back -back quarters of negative growth, uh, videos of uh, President Obama saying you never want to hike taxes in this sort of an economy. Uh, and, of course, we know Larry Summers famously begged this White House not to go through with that $1.9 trillion so-called COVID rescue package. What's changed about the Democratic Party? Uh, I mean, it, do, are, they so, are they so enamored with this green utopia that they are now overlooking some of the warning signs from the, within about the economic harm that these programs are doing to everyday Americans? Well, unfortunately, Charles, I don't know how to put it any other way, but they're letting the, the truth be a casualty to their political advocacy and their desire to have something to show voters in, in uh, mid November in the midterm elections. Uh, I'll add to your list. It wasn't just President Clinton. It was also President Obama. It was Chuck Schumer and it was Joe Manchin. <laughs> just yeah. And now they've all Olympic worthy flip flops, at least Senator Schumer, Senator Manchin. But uh, the facts uh, speak for themselves. Uh, I got a minute to go, but I do want to go back uh, to to the to your COVID um, situation and, and the rules of the Senate, um, where you must be present. Uh, I, I know there's been a wave of COVID cases on Capitol Hill. When, do you think that everyone will be there in time to to actually, if there's a vote next week, to be will be present? 
Well, in the 50-50 Senate, that's a $64,000 question, and we don't know who might get it. Uh, I began to experience some symptoms last weekend, and, and so uh, under CDC guidelines, I'm planning on coming back if we do have a vote this weekend uh, with uh, my mask on, as the CDC requires. But uh, we've had a lot of problems with attendance. Uh, mm -hmm. um, 50 Senate, every person right. counts. Well, sir, I want to thank you for not wearing your mask during this interview. Some people are still wearing them on by themselves. So I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much for that and appreciate all the service that you provide. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.